welcome back to another video. So today we're going to continue with our Rachel Mintz color along that we've been doing here on my channel. And all of the videos are some type of tutorial. We've done a Derwent Inktense tutorial uh, for beginners. I'm continuing with the Derwent Inktense. So this whole entire color along is a really good tutorial just to learn how to use Derwent Inktense. In the last video, I showed you how to color this grass. So that was a really great tutorial. We also colored in the mushrooms. This is going to be a tree bark uh, tutorial, and we are gonna color in the butterfly up at the top. And then in the next video, we will complete this with the background. If you have any suggestions for the background, what medium you would like to see me use, please let me know in the comments below. If you would like to follow along with this color along and all the tutorials, you will find a link to Rachel Mintz's digital store down in the description box below where you can download this entire digital version of this book. This adorable little bunny is from the Friendship Coloring Book and you can grab it with my coupon code for I believe like right around $3 or $3.33, so it's a super great deal and you will get a ton of adorable little images, bunnies and some other cute fun little animals that you can color and the entire book is all grayscale. If you check the description box down below, you will also find a link down there for my Facebook group if you would like to join us over there, my email list, my Etsy store, and my Patreon if you would like to support me there. Let's go ahead and get into this tutorial for the tree bark. Okay, so I have you nice and zoomed in here and we're gonna go ahead and get started on the tree bark here. And I've got three colors that I'm going to get started with and then after I get all these three colors laid down, I'm going to bring in some other colors. So I've got mustard, amber, and oak. We have used oak and mustard but amber is a new color that I'm bringing in, and it is rather close to this mustard, but it's going to give it a little bit more of a pop for the areas that I want really deeply highlighted. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the oak here, and I'm gonna use the oak to go over all of these very dark areas of the grayscale, but over here where it's really, really dark, I'm leaving a few spaces and not coloring them in because I want to be able to add another color right in those areas just to give it a little bit more depth and dimension. So just like I showed you in my first video, I am just really using the grayscale to guide me as to where I lay my colors. And this is not going to be the darkest color that I use. Like I said, I'm going to be bringing in some other colors later and the other colors are going to help me to add a lot more of the shadows that are needed to really be able to keep the separation from this uh, dirt or sand down here and this tree bark that I'm coloring. So I'm just going over all of the darkest areas and making sure I get into all of these little spaces. And in some areas, like I always do, I'm just doing my own thing and laying the colors where I think that they should go, even if the grayscale is a little bit lighter. When you're coloring grayscale, don't really ever be worried that you're gonna mess up because everything is fixable. <laughs> it's really quite difficult to mess it up. And with these Derwent ink tents, after they dry and you create that first permanent layer, you can always come back and lay another color right over the top of it. Now I'm not gonna come back with water until I've got all my colors laid where I want them. When you're coloring something like a tree bark, like I am here, you always wanna make sure that you have quite a bit of texture. And I'm going over this with an extra layer just to make sure I have enough pigment down there so that when I come back with my other colors, they'll just really blend right in. And then when I come back with my water, the colors will look even more intense. Okay, so now let's go ahead. Oh, I need to lay a little bit right up in here because I need that separation right there between his cute little tail and the tree stump. And see how I'm adding some of these little lines in here? That again is just to create some extra texture even though the grayscale does not tell me to. Okay, so the next color I have is mustard. And I'm going to start pulling this color in and around all of the areas where I laid this oak color 
and blend it right into there. And I'm still leaving some of the white because I wanna be able to come back with my even lighter color in those areas as well. But I wanna put this mustard color all around where I laid that darkest color. And what was the other color called? This color, Amber, is lighter. I believe this, oh, did I use, oh, my goodness. Look, the tip looks lighter but it looks like this one might actually be the darker one. The amber is actually the darker color. So I'm gonna come down here and I am going to go right over that mustard and just fix it. <laughs> and see, these are rather expensive pencils and even still, you can't ever really go by what it shows you on the color tip of the pencil. And I'm gonna be coming back with my mustard to add the highlights. Okay, so I'm just kind of going over all of this here because I want this area much darker, but I want a difference in these colors at the same time. And then I want to come over the medium gray scale over here on this part of the tree bark. And I want to pull down all of these colors going over that color and pulling it down just a little bit further. And I'm gonna go all the way out to the edge. Now I have my mustard again. And I'm just going to fill in all of the white areas with this color. And I'm gonna blend all of these colors into each other. And this is really going to help to create the texture because you could see a huge difference in the colors that I'm using. I think I forgot to lay the amber down here, so I'm gonna come down here and just lay a little bit of amber and just blend this right in where I would want it. And see how I'm actually just going over some of the uh, some of the whiter areas because I want a really nice blend of those colors, even though the grayscale is not showing me or not sh not telling me to do that. Now I'm going to come in here in these spaces and just come in here with the mustard. And now I've got a really good blend of those colors, and that should create quite a bit of texture. And I'm using this up and down motion with my pencil just because I don't wanna take away from the texture when I created those lines initially. I still see a lot of white over here, so let me go ahead and come back. And with these Derwent ink tents, you don't really want to leave a whole lot of white. Is this the mustard? Nope, that's the amber, I want the mustard. But you don't wanna leave a whole lot of white. You wanna make sure it is mostly covered so that when you come back with your water, it's really going to pull that pigment and blend the colors into one another. So you have to think about how I'm holding my pencil because I just realized I was in the way of what I was doing. <laughs> I always have to pay attention to that and it's just something I've had to get used to since I have been on YouTube. <laughs> Let's put a little bit here to just separate that and create that separation there between the top of the tree stump and then the side of it. And see, I'm just making some more of these lines here to create that texture that I need to make it look more natural. Okay, so I have my water brush. Again, this is the Derwent number one. They come in three different sizes when you purchase them. I'll have the links for all of this down in the description box below. So like I showed you in the last videos, we're gonna start with the lightest color and we're gonna pull it into the darkest color. And because I am trying to make sure I create texture, I'm trying to be very careful as to where I go with the uh, water brush. Since I went into the darker areas, I wanna make sure I stay mostly in the darker areas until I brush my uh, brush off. I think I'm gonna need a little bit more water here. Let me wipe my brush off so I can come back and we're gonna pull in now some of the lighter colors and see how I'm just dragging them right into where I laid the darker colors. And now I can pull back up and I've got a lot of that darker color in here so I have to be very careful not to pull that into an area where I don't want it. Okay, so maybe time to go ahead and let's brush the brush off and I'm gonna add a little more water. And now I'm gonna come back and pull into these lighter colors. And look how that's just really making it pop. I love that color. Now see, since the color is very similar, or the colors, I did add in that other, um, the amber, which was a bit different than what I'm using down here in this dirt or the sand. But the colors are still pretty similar, so I'm gonna show you 
what we're going to do after we get this layer to dry permanently and then I'm going to come back and show you exactly what I'm going to do to make sure there is a separation and the colors are different from one another and that the bark is not running into this dirt down here. So I'm coming over into this darker area now and I'm trying to stay just where I've got that darker color because there's a lot of those, the blend of the two darker colors. I could probably just go right over it and the texture will still stay if I just use this sort of stroking motion back and forth and then come in here to the lighter color. And it's starting to look really, really good. I'm just putting some more water on my brush. I want to make sure I blend out all of this area where I added that oak and I'm trying to stay out of where I've got the grass and then I'm going to pull it this way so I could start to bring in some of that lighter color and pull it into the darker color. And I may need to come back and do some more to this. And I'm still trying to think of some colors for that butterfly up there. Okay, so I'm going to have to let this dry and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to it after it dries. I think that this layer that I added, oh, maybe I need to come back up here and did I, oh, I didn't even go over this part. Make sure I get these darker areas first. Oh wow, so I missed quite a few spaces. It's kind of hard to tell over the grayscale. Okay, so I waited a little while and this should be pretty dry now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back with this leaf green and I'm gonna do sort of the same thing that I did over here when I colored the grass and showed you how to combine those colors so that they really stand out and you can see the texture, but if you go online and you look up tree stumps, there's a lot of tree stumps. I don't know if you've ever seen one that has the algae on it or the green algae. So I am going to try to make it look a little bit more realistic and it's going to help me to create a little bit more balance to this page and bring the green in from over here and from over here into my tree stump and also create the separation between the tree stump and this dirt down here. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to add some green or this leaf green rather in some areas on the tree stump. And I'm just gonna go right over some of the areas where I've already added color. Now this is not a green green. Maybe I should find a better green. I think I might want spring green or fern. Okay, so let me try this with fern because fern is a little bit lighter and it may look a little bit more realistic and show up a little bit more. Now remember when I come back and I add water, it's probably going to make quite a bit of a difference. And if I add this green over some of the spaces where I had the lightest color, that amber or the uh, mustard, it's probably gonna make quite a bit more of a difference. And I think I'll add a little bit more color in here because I really think this little part here that's sticking out of the tree bark really needs something else added to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and come back with our water and let's see if we can make that green stand out just a little bit more. I'm gonna try not to pull it too much into the other colors, but just go over where I laid the green. And it shows up, but it doesn't show up too much. So I think it looks pretty good. I mean, I just wanted a little bit of the green just to add some color. I really didn't want too much. The last thing I want to do is I grabbed this uh, sepia ink and it's a very dark, dark color. And I'm going to use this just to create a little bit more texture on the tree bark and to really create the separation down here. So like I'm going to come down here and I'm going to just go right around and create some really deep shadows and maybe pull this up just a little bit like this using that same up and down motion to create a little bit more texture. Look at the difference that is making because before it just sort of blended in and so we really wanna make it stand out from this other area here. And this is a really dark color so I'm trying to be really careful with it and not Put it somewhere where I really don't want it and of course with these pencils they are so amazing like you saw seen earlier they are just going to go right over anything else that I've already laid down there so you can see that it's really creating a separation there 
And of course I still need to come back and make sure it's nicely blended in. I think I need some right over here and then we need to create that separation right here between the grass and the tree stump. So I'm just laying it right over some of the grass that we colored in the previous video and it's really creating a beautiful shadow. And so I should probably do the same thing over here. Okay, so now we just need to come back with our water. Okay, so let's just go over this. And of course, this is going to intensify it all that much more. I'm trying to make sure that that is really blended in. It doesn't just look like a line and it will look quite different after it dries. So let me finish this up here. See how it's just creating a much bigger separation in these areas and I'm just pulling it up just a little bit and I may need to come back and blend another color into it. I don't know yet. And this paper is handling the Derwent Ink Tents really well. This is the Spring Hill paper. I say it in every single video, but I still have several of you that continue to just ask me, what paper are you using? <laughs> okay, so I think that might need to be blended out just a little bit. Just gonna pull this through just a bit with this leaf green, just a little bit to make it look more natural. And then over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, so the bark is done, and now we need to come up here and we need to color this cute little butterfly. Okay, so I chose some colors for the butterfly, and of course there are colors that we've already used because we want to continue bringing balance to this page. So my darkest color here is going to be the red oxide, which I used in this cute little mushroom down here. And then I have burnt orange and cadmium orange and cadmium yellow, which I believe were all used in the petals of this flower. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing some of the colors from over here to the butterfly and some of the colors down here to the butterfly. And I think that I'm just gonna go ahead and color the butterfly and I'm gonna speed this up since y'all know exactly what I'm doing and you've seen me lay the colors in every other area on the coloring page. And so if you watch it at full speed, sometimes it's just really fun to just watch something come to life. And before I do it, I also wanna let you know that I am probably gonna to, going to uh, come back with the outliner, the Derwent outliner pencil, and I'm just going to outline these areas here and possibly the center of the butterfly here. So let's go ahead and do that now.
mustard and I'm just going to finish off the center of this butterfly. So the oak, if you remember, is sort of like a brown color, but I want the mustard in there so that we can really see it and it creates that extra bit of pop in there as well. How come it doesn't, that is very weird. Most butterflies have the little tail thing that comes down here and it's not in the drawing. <laughs> So let's just come back and pull these colors together and I'm going to do that just all on my own <laughs> just because I think it looks better. Our bunny is finished and all we have left is the background so I hope you all enjoyed this little tutorial for the tree bark. I showed you how to add a little bit of algae in there making it look a little bit more realistic. We did this adorable little butterfly and we brought balance to the entire page by bringing some of these colors over here. But we still have to finish the background so whatever suggestions you have for the background please let me know in the comments below so that I could go through the through those and decide what I want to do for the background of this page. I love how this adorable little bunny turned out. He's so so cute. Again if you want to follow along with this color along you can check the description box down below and I will have a link down there for the Rachel Mintz Friendship Book which is the digital copy. You could also purchase the Friendship Book on Amazon if you want to, but if you want to use the Derwin Ink Tents, the Spring Hill paper goes very well and is handling these pencils very, very well. So I'll have links to all of that down in the description box below. And if you use my coupon code, you will get 33% off making the digital version of the Friendship Book only about $3.33, which is a great deal. So I hope to see you in the next video where I do the background and finish this page off. So make sure you join me for the next video where I do the background. And of course, if you're not following along with this color along, any of these tutorials that you've seen in this color along, you could apply to any other coloring page. I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.